it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. Nobody really likes to spend much time thinking about where the shit they eat at their favorite fast food joint comes from. I don't know what it is. There's something definitely off about this burger. And given the fact that it's made out of heavily processed, mass-produced, beige slop, barely fit for human consumption, that's pretty fucking understandable. But ethical concerns about animal rights and fears of heart attacks or recola poisoning aside. If you're like other Americans, you love to eat Chipotle, but you hate all those terrible blood stains in your underwear. Do you know that the greasy fucking meat patty from your Mickey D's quarter pounder was most likely produced by a prisoner? It looked like spit to you. Yeah. Ah, fuck it. While conservative pundits and protectionist straight union leaders are constantly complaining about jobs being stolen by Mexican or Chinese workers, one of the best kept secrets of the past 40 fucking years of neoliberal capitalist restructuring of the American economy has been the tapping of a vast pool of even cheaper labor found within its own fucking borders in the vast concentration camps of the motherfucking prisoner industrial complex. There's papaya puree made by prisoners in Hawaii, jeans from Oregon, waterbeds from Nevada, balloons from Kansas, floor tiles from South Carolina. Even components of Patriot missiles have been made by inmates. The United Snakes is the undisputed world leader when it comes to locking up its own citizens. Nearly one in every 100 adults in America is in prison or jail. At any given time, there are around 2.4 million peeps languishing behind bars in federal penitentiaries and state and local jails. And that figure doesn't even include peeps locked up in migrant detention facilities or those out on bail, probation, or house arrest. Yep, the motherfucking prison industrial complex is a multi-billion dollar industry. And it's not just for profit prisons and corrupt fucking judges that are cashing in. Many of the richest corporations in the world pay prisoners pennies per hour, employing them for everything from agriculture and manufacturing manufacturing to staffing call centers. Meanwhile, food service providers like Aramark and telecommunications companies such as GTL rake in hundreds of millions of dollars every year through no-bid contracts that grant them a complete fucking monopoly on services such as the provision of prisoners' meals, commissary items, and phone calls, allowing them to charge pretty much whatever they fucking want. In the six beef jerkies, 600 buns, a bottle of moisturizer, a box of Q-tips, some Japanese noodle cups, say six, and that jigsaw puzzle there. To top it off, these hyper-exploitative conditions are hidden from public view and carried out in massive self-contained facilities equipped with state-of-the-art techniques and machinery of repression and surveillance. You see this shit? It's going down in this bit. But even against these incredible fucking odds, prisoners in the United Snakes continue to resist. The past five years has seen an explosion of prisoner rebellions and clashes with guards in prisons across the country, as well as incredibly well-organized actions including coordinated work stoppages, boycotts, and hunger strikes. With the assistance of outside organizations affiliated with the IWW's Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee, or IWOC, and the Free Alabama Movement's outside support network, Mothers and Families, these campaigns have produced an impressive network of organizers and prisons across the country. And on September 9th, on the 45th anniversary of the 1971 Attica prison uprising, this painstaking organizing will culminate in what's expected to be the largest fucking prison strike in motherfucking history, with coordinated actions planning at least 20 states. Me long and me on hand, me not out for peace and me 